you know, because that's what we're talking about today is like an adult content uh, comic book, The Crust, right? Or Crust. And so it's gotten, um, you know, horror comics have been around for a long time, right? Uh, I think a lot of people don't realize how long. And of course, uh, horror comics have also been the reason why, right? Been the reason why they um, basically had the comics code, right? Uh, Edwin? Yeah, the comic book Creepy, Creep Show. Uh, there was yeah. other ones that were um, with uh, The Creeper and um, uh, all those other horror comic books that came about um, that made movies that everybody actually yeah. used as um, movies today. You know what I'm saying? So that, that right there started that um, when the storyboarding made easy. Yeah. <laughs> you know? That gave yeah. everybody... And, uh, and the incentive of making a horror movie, you know, it's easier planned out on a comic, which worked well. Exactly. And and the thing, you know, like like, I think it was only just I think last week it was where, uh, or over the weekend, I was on uh, Niobe's channel, you know, just talking about writing and stuff like that. And um, and then afterwards, he said he was going to be on um, another channel called um, Comics Wednesdays or Beyond Wednesdays. And um, and used to, and one of the the guy the the podcaster for that channel, right? He was talking about how he was going through all you know the comics for Cross, and he was talking about how Cross is going to be live action, right? And I'm like, that can't happen because Cross for me, like to be honest, Cross for me is one of the things that I actually feel sorry about. Uh, got my almost got myself in trouble at a at a. Uh, and I can't because I didn't realize that the kid next to me, because she sits just as tall as me, an Indian girl, and I didn't realize she was young, right? And I'm here, a 40-year-old guy going, oh, you should read this book. This is really good. For me, <laughs> I'm thinking, yeah, that's that's yeah. pretty cool. Like, I'm, you know, you know I, I'm, I'm a guy who's reading this stuff, right? Book of Garth Ennis, right? Hardcover, right? I've got the whole set. And right. I'm reading, you know, The Boys. So for me, I'm, I'm like a Garth Ennis fan. You know, and so for me, I don't mind Garth in this uh, comics because I'm in, you know, I've grown up reading his work for 20 odd plus years now. And and it's kind of, you know, you're standing there and there's your friend, you know, your, your retailer friend, Jeremy, and he's got his comics out and you're standing there going, oh, yeah. Oh, and the person next to you goes, oh, what, should, what comic should I read? And I'm going, oh, this is a good read if you're into horror. And then my brain goes, later oh. not right away yeah. this is a freaking r18 extreme violent uh, sexual content wow. material. you just right? reminded me. <laughs> you just reminded me when i was in um in high school and um yeah. somebody introduced me to the Faust comic i was like right oh, what, the what the heck is going on here this is crazy i need to have each and every one of them where do you get them <laughs> right but that's this because is I was really growing up, you know. But um, yeah. that's for an older kid, very older kid. <laughs> that ain't a teenage comic book. Yet. You know what yeah, I'm and, and, but dope. that's what it comes down to, right? Your where your age group is and where you're what you're right. used to. Right. Definitely. And imagine this kid, like is uh, like this young girl, right? Uh, has been reading like Spider Man, uh, something like say Fable. Or maybe uh, you know, maybe the most she's ever heard of is or read is Walking Dead, which is very tame compared to the Cross, right? And um, it's kind of the same vein, also like Cross, and um, and Walking Dead is along the same vein. It's like there's a virus, yeah. right? And the story behind that is that the, there's a virus leak in a a lab in England, and it's a cross that forms on the thing. That's how you know these. This is the one disease people. You know that are affected by by yeah, the story. Mm. I don't even want to get into that, but hey, uh, I remember when Walking Dead wasn't even popular. Then all of a yep. sudden, it blew up. <laughs> that guy was the happiest man alive. <laughs> yeah, and and the other thing was they didn't even know what they were gonna do with it. I've I've um I've watched um or was it? I think that was Invincible. Sorry, might have been might have been Walking Dead as well because they didn't know what was the point of Walking Dead because he was just writing it. And yeah. as a writer, I, I kind of feel the same way. Like a lot of people don't understand that when you're writing that first story, 
you're still trying to flesh out what you're trying to do with your story arc, you know, and you're trying to figure out where you want to go. The first story is like that one of the easiest bit to write. It's like, oh, this happens. And then you go, well, how do you, what else happens to make it tie up into what you want to do, you know? And, um, and I, I thought like it was a quite interesting to see because a good thing about this is right. Uh, for those of you guys who don't know, uh, Garth Ennis is the one who's writing uh, the um, the film script for the cross. And my my knee jerk reaction was for cross, just like it was for the boys. Don't do this. <laughs> you know, don't turn this into that. But I mean, of course, I've been wrong about that. But I still won't watch the boys, even though I love the boys. Right. Uh, you know, I, I, even though I've got signed copies and stuff, you know, by the artists and stuff, I've got like, you know, like this sort of stuff in person, yeah. right? I still won't watch the boys live action because in my brain, I know what those characters are. And there's, and, but the thing about the crossed, it's like, you've got, you know, with Garth Ennis, you've got boys at about t five, the cross is 10 right mm. it's 10 it might even even be 12 you know just that freaking volume it's it's over base mm. however that's what makes it good the right. fact that otherwise and this is what my my contention with the cross is it's like if he's going to adapt it it has to be watered down it's going to be very tame yeah. because like you said with faust right avatar is the same company that's produced that produced uh crossed otherwise nobody would touch that and otherwise it would not be that big right because right. the only reason it was big is because Gothenus wrote it and because after Avatar put their name behind it to publish it, uh, because Avatar is known as an adult extreme, uh, you know, comic publisher and everybody's aware of that. Man, they made like, they had Alan Moore write the 100, yes. right? A hundred years after the cross. Right. He's a devoted so, writer. Yeah. Like, you know the legend and they had so many people write it there was actually an online um series i can't remember what it was called but by size barrier and that was really cool it was like a, a daily um diary type this type thing so and it's different it's a different so it's a acquired taste to suspiria you know uh, yeah i could never get into it but there's so many horror fans that love it they really the love cross it. suspiria yeah, uh, oh, you mean the movie Suspiria? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, I I don't think I ever watched it. Or if I have, I it's one of those things that just go past. I, yeah, I don't like too. But there's people who really swear on that movie, like, yeah, this movie's amazing, blah, blah, blah. And I, I saw a little bit, then I couldn't get into it. I think it's the time period. Almost like that yeah. like Clockwork Orange style of movie stuff. Right. You know what I mean? I, I like the weirdness of the Clockwork Orange and stuff like that. But yeah. Um, uh, that that's what that's what you know separated horror from weird and um the haraki horror picture show mixed with music and that's where all that horror change up started working yeah. with each other you know that's where it built up that style it's a retro style you know everybody loves that retro style on horror horror should stay retro because it's raw you know what i mean yeah. when you start adding the new wave and putting a big old budget to it you forget about the story and it's all right. visual, or you end up forgetting about the visuals and be all story, and then mm. people don't get into it. They, they you they lose their their um wanting to watch something that they actually favored as a comic yeah. book one time, because it's kind of hard to you know make an adaptation that from from a comic book to a movie if you don't have yeah. that that right feeling of how that person who wrote it was in the movie was intended to be. You know what I mean? Or right. how the book reads. It's how it reads. The pace is different in a movie. Well, that's the same thing. Like when it comes to adaptation, I have a, you know, this wife kind of still like, well, in my brain, as a, you know, as a huge fan of Ernest, like he's in my top five, right? As writer, um, you know, uh, writers in comic things. But like when, when you look at, like, let me have a look. Like, so this is the image I chose, you know, for our. <laughs> it's so classic. It's all classic DVD characters, you know, <laughs> when they um, put it on the front cover. Yeah. The cover so, yeah, like it. It's not it's messing with me. Hold on. Let me see if I can get into a full page here to display. 
No, it won't do that. So one like so this is like the classic, you know, that's the what the whole cross thing is like it's a cross forms, it's you know, it's the virus breaks out. What it also the whole point of the cross is the disease itself, right? Um, let me see if I can find a synopsis. Right. So here we go. The story follows uh, survive, um, follows survivors dealing with a pandemic that causes its victims to carry out their most evil thoughts. Right. That alone there should let you know this is not for you know, the novice horror fan. Right. It's it's like anything. It's like all holes barred. Like there's like it's there's no holes barred. I should say there's no there's no stopping. Um, you know, when you go, when you go, full, it's like going full evil, right? It's like, it's going, like I'm going with my um, Templeton comic book, right? It's going full out. It's not stopping. And even for me, I wouldn't want that. Like if I was going to make that story, like, and like somebody suggested to adapt Templeton, you know, um, rise and fall into a, um, into a, into, you know, that the rise and fall story into, a, uh, into a live action. I'd be like, there's certain things you can't do that. And there's certain things you can keep in it. Whereas like the whole point of the cross is like it's it's the extremism that makes it stand out from any other story, right? Than any other comic book. Because it's uh, you know, it's it's take away it's taking away the mask of of you know uh inhibitions. It's like nothing matters now. It's like it's all go. And and to be honest. It does all go, and that's why I can't show you a lot of the images in the comic book because there's some very vile. And here's the thing about this, right? After and this is the I think it was like six story or eight story comic arc, right? For the story arc for the first standalone thing, they got other people to uh, ever to you know um, I can't remember is it Williamson over at um, ever to press got other people to jump on and do like uh an other story arcs like i said alan moore um i think i've got a whole bunch of um names here let me just grab to come on and work on it and um no, another thing let me see. another thing where the perks of being independent there's no editor-in-chief stating that you cannot do a certain thing like if you were to be working for marvel or DC. right where they're gonna um demonetize anything that's gonna be inappropriate for a certain age bracket or the, right. the uh their rules that they go by you know that's what's great about independent you know but that's on you you if you know that independent it is adultage you know yeah <laughs> you have to be careful with that yeah it's understandable you know what i'm saying you know they, they, when you go to a comic shop they're, they're, they're gonna have to lead you to where the you know the more docile well, this one is like what are you into you know right. what are you know it's not like it's on the on the cover i mean on they the shelf the on something on the shelf right? they get away they get away with the word comic book because <laughs> it's considered you know kids comics comedy you know like mm. when you right. say novel so this is... graphic novel is a little different so That's this is the first, uh, you know, Jason Burroughs and the first one. So graphic. it's not something you go to, the, you know, like you said, like you can't say to the novice person who walks in, hey, here's, here's a cross. <laughs> right, right. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like. Like you have any kids at home? <laughs> yeah. You know, uh, this is something that's not for kids, you know. Right. But I had, a, I had a friend, like I had a, um, you know, an acquaintance of mine who, you know, I worked with um, years up, you know, a couple of years after like my shop, right? So when I had the shop, he used to buy the 100 and he used to buy the alternate covers and stuff. So I would have like, um, I would, you know, put in the orders for the covers that he wanted where the previews book come in and he would sign that and I'd send it off to Jeremy and Jeremy would send it to edit to his list of, um, you know, because we're basically what I mean by Jeremy is like, I was getting my comics through another comic store because that made it easier for me to be able to not worry about the cost of um it added another 10 percent or whatever to it but it meant that like i didn't have to worry about freight i didn't have to worry about all the you know having to work with diamond and having to work with previews and sort that out but he used to he was the one that was to get this because i'd read this years ago with the first issue right like maybe it, i think it came out about 20 2022 or something like me let me see uh 2008 
right? So it came out six years uh, prior to me opening my comic shop. Mm. So many of the volumes are already out, but then, you know, he'd actually, I think he actually bought my, my personal set because I put all my comics, like all my personal collection into the store as like, uh, as a um, stock, right? And so that meant that like with the, uh, you know, anything out, I was looking for it myself. I was thinking, where's my cross set? Like, I don't have it. I was like, oh, that's right. Because I sold it in the store, right? Uh, and so he, he read it and said, yeah, I'm into this. So he came back and bought this and bought the 100. Now, when I say the cross is like 12 and, and, um, and the boys is five on the, you know, on the volume scale, I really mean that. If you've never read the cross, you know, you, it's, you're in for extreme violence, exploitation. It's everything, uh, abuse, just boom. And the other thing I was mentioning earlier with like Avatar, right? Because he, they had other people come and write as well, and other artists come on. They put out like thousands of alternate covers. Really, seriously, like thousands, probably probably like hundred, couple of hundred you know, maybe around 500 different cover variances. So you had wraparounds, you had foils, you had negatives, you, because Avatar does that, right? Uh, like Dynamite, they like do 100 covers for every freaking single cover. Um, but the cross was become like, became like an underground, um, you know, fan. Uh, like, what is it called? Underground uh, cult classic, ah, you know? And so it, it blew up, like in the adult readers, right? I love them, love them. Cult, cult classics for horror and anything that deals with cult, you have to watch. Yeah. It's funny. I love them. Well, the other thing with that was that, like, it's like Evil Dead meets um, meets Twenty Eight Days Later, meets Walking Dead. Um, oh, wow. Demonic possessions mixed with it. It's almost like that, dude. It's wow. like the exorcist, right? It's like everything. It's like, like I said, it's like it's your. It's like um, there's no inhibitions. Oh, okay. think of like, think of like um, every evil thing you can think of somebody doing. It's like in during, the book. during during the revelations when the rapture happened and it made this disappear these people and all the rest of the demons that stood about. <laughs> That's it. The that game. extreme, right? The, the spoils of war. <laughs> yeah. And That's crazy. That's why you don't want to come at this book thinking, oh, it's just another boys, it's just another preacher. It's not. It's mm. you know, like this, like for me, like when I when I look at like um my um um Templeton book, right? When I look at my Templeton book, I go, uh yeah, this is extreme. <laughs> compared to my other stuff I do. This is like this is like the next level. Uh because this is about these things. This is like the you know, somebody on a way trying to do something very huge, change the world in a big way. Right. And that person doesn't himself doesn't have any inhibitions. So right, you got a very um, you know, very vile creature, a very, very vile human being. How right. however, in the crust every cross is a very vile human being so you've got like you know you've got the normal people trying to survive and then you've got this whole pandemic of human beings who have the virus and they're the most vile creatures around and that's why that's why i felt like yo this can't can't be made into a movie unless you water it down right yeah and it takes away from the the feeling of what you liked yeah then it, it becomes then, a, a novelistic style episodic series <laughs> yeah loves i like this series type thing you know what i'm saying because it keeps you watching something that you do like but yeah. um full-fledged on movies and they need a good budget in order to be a uh, replay value if there's no yeah. replay value, you don't want to purchase something that you only saw one day. You decided to buy it for fifteen bucks or maybe less. Call it a yeah. day, and that's it. It loses the hype. You know what I mean? But when it has episodes, it I mean, 
Like it. I mean, that's the whole point of merchandising, right? You want to get uh, return, uh, what is it called? Return um, customers, you know? Right. You want replay value. Yeah. Yeah, because, you know, this so, kind of book I still read till this day, even though I read it already. <laughs> yeah. Really so, you <laughs> see that? That's the most um, I can show. I can't show anything else. Beautiful. Apart from that. What is that? Right? And it's dead. Yeah. Uh -oh. Is that what yeah. I think it is? Yeah. <laughs> so, if, um, you know, there's, um, you know, we've got some people watching. Thank you for watching. Uh, if you haven't, you know, if you haven't been to this channel before, this is basically we talk about comics, we talk about movies, we talk about everything. We even interview um, guests. We interview people from the indie comics scene, film uh, writers. Is this, you know, Plunge Cars is just uh, about entertainment and pop culture and stuff. But also, you know, we talk about things that are, you know, about that interests me like I'm, I'm you know yeah. everybody's multifaceted right and so you'll get some you know you'll get some updates uh, i mean you get some clips about some silly stuff that i thought was interesting however if you've never been here please subscribe uh you'll get some notifications and all that but also it helps the algorithm as they say uh but also join us in chat let me know if you know if you've read cross if let us know if you've read cross what is your favorite horror movie and why did you like that horror movie what is it about that you know that you guys um that drew drew you to that story or that comic or that movie you know cook it down be well and catch you later